Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss a quite remarkable report of a huge Brexit-inspired split between the Prime Minister and Home Secretary. If true, this would suggest a cabinet split against itself as the government struggles to regain control after imploding spectacularly last month. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the current state of play in terms of the disastrous mini budget is Downing Street's quite uncertain. There are reports of plans for just a, a U-turn on pretty much all of it. And there are also reports that maybe not. We don't know. So we're not going to find out apparently until Quasi Quartet gets back from America. So what we're going to talk about in the meantime. I know the cabinet split. So there's a report I'm referring to. Unfortunately, it's the sun. Just to show caution. I do get my hands dirty quite a bit regarding uh, the, the worst of the Tory press. I usually draw the line at the sun. But that being said, they are close to the Conservatives and they are known to publish the truth now and then. Also, this story is about Home Secretary Swallow Braverman and it rings true. The report suggests that the Home Secretary has been frozen out of immigration reform planning meetings. This would be remarkable because immigration is clearly a Home Office issue. To have the Home Secretary frozen out of policy meetings on that issue would be dysfunctional to say the least. But the situation is as follows. Ever since our hard Brexit, we've struggled to get enough workers for quite a lot of key positions. This has been especially newsworthy in hospitality and food production. Not enough farm workers to harvest crops, not enough butchers to process pigs, for example, not enough drivers to distribute food. At every step of the food supply chain, there's a shortage of workers. The whole thing's been a mess, and it's the reason why British supermarkets have struggled to stock fresh food items, or in some cases, items at all. As someone who's taken care of grocery shopping for quite a few decades, there was a huge downturn in availability and quality last year. It was very noticeable. But it affects more than just restaurants and supermarkets. Recently, Andrew Bailey, the governor of the Bank of England, said that the number one problem that businesses complain to, to him, are about labour shortages. So we need a flexible approach to immigration. Now, at this point, you may need to sit down because I'm going to praise Liz Truss. Yes, on balance, she is a worse prime minister than Boris Johnson, as expected by everyone paying attention. But there is one crucial area in which she is far superior. Boris Johnson, no doubt inspired by a combination of his clear narcissism and very privileged upbringing, had the attitude that he could just impose any policy and somehow officials would make it all work. Also, that anything could be done if you just believed hard enough. It's as if those who set the curriculum at Eton and Disney scriptwriters are the same people. Nowhere was this more clear than in Johnson's immigration policies. Previous Tory Prime Ministers had always blamed immigrants for their own failures and they would always say, oh, we're absolutely going to cut net migration. It was easy and effective, but they all knew that actually a major economy cannot possibly remain a major economy without a large migrant labour force. They got that. They saw the research themselves. They knew the score. So Tory prime ministers would promise to cut immigration, but it would always go up. Johnson was the first mad loon to actually try and cut immigration. He put the most evil sadist he could find in charge of the Home Office and allowed her to impose an insane points-based immigration system that had no relation to our actual labour needs at all. And I thought they might just impose this immigration system, then have a massive list of exceptions to make it all work. And there is a, a list of exceptions, the shortage occupation list, but they were nowhere near enough to allow people to actually recruit workers that they couldn't get domestically. So, you know, even for the exceptions, you still need to get visas for your would-be migrant workers as well. Now, if those workers are from the EU, they could work somewhere else without needing a visa at all. That's the problem. So, so if you're trying to attract someone from the EU, even if, even if the immigration policy would allow them to come and work here, for them, it's a choice between working in the UK, where you've got to go through all the hassle of getting a visa, or work in Germany or Ireland or the Netherlands, where well, you don't. 
But Liz Truss is actually pragmatic. Yes, her economic ideas are fairly insane, but if you set aside that, everything else is quite pragmatic. We're seeing very positive language coming out of the government regarding the Northern Ireland Protocol. I remain wary, but the news so far is hopeful. You know, she's dropped the plans to privatise Channel 4 and threaten BBC funding to a large extent. Um, and, and she's also preparing to massively ease our immigration restrictions. You know, th there's also, in terms of general EU attitudes as well, she recently attended the meeting of European leaders that was hosted by the EU, even though they made her stand at the back for the group call. You know, seriously, if she had a more realistic outlook on economics... She'd actually be doing a reasonable job as Prime Minister in many ways. It's only because she's tanked the economy that all of the positive work she's doing is, is like null and void now. Even Jacob Rees-Mogg is keen on the plans to increase economic immigration. Only, fly in the ointment, the Home Secretary, Swella Braveman, turns out to be even more nuts than Pretty Patel. And she's been arguing for policies in direct contradiction to what Truss is trying to achieve. At the Tory party conference, Braverman talked about reducing immigration just at the time when Truss was saying, actually, we need to increase it. This is a direct challenge to Truss's leadership and a shocking breach of ministerial responsibility. Close example I can think of from Labour was this summer, Sam Tarry, who made up policies in direct contradiction to official Labour policy, and he was sacked. And now he's been deselected as their candidate for the next election. But most of the public won't even know about that because he was a petty, selfish little prick and no sod knows who he is. Braverman is the Home Secretary and is advocating a policy that is antagonistic with the Prime Minister who appointed her. Now, it's clear to me what's going on. Last December, when Boris Johnson lost a seat that had been held by the Conservatives for like two centuries, literally two centuries, it was clear he'd have to go. He was losing incredibly safe seats. The sort of seats you could put a blue rosette on a donkey and people would vote for it. It took another half a year for a majority of Tory MPs to realise he had to go, but it was inevitable at that point. Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss both made very obvious moves to drum up support for a leadership contest. Truss was a little bit more subtle about it, which is how she was able to present herself as the Johnson loyalist, but in reality she was pushing just as hard as Sunak to get support for the leadership contest that was very obviously coming. Braverman's doing the same thing, only in a more blatant manner than even Sunak did. If Truss had any authority in her party, she'd have slapped the Home Secretary down immediately, who would then have had to make a public statement, modifying her statement to uh, explain that actually it's all in tune with the government's formal policy. This has not happened. And if Truss has said something, and Braverman is ignoring her, a Prime Minister with authority would have sacked her. This has also not happened. So Braverman is happily going around making up policies that are in direct contradiction to the Prime Minister's stated aims. And this isn't the only case of a Cabinet Minister briefing against the PM. Penny Mordaunt famously said that benefits should rise uh, in line with inflation at the same time as Truss was saying it should rise only with wages. Jacob Rees-Mogg's been at odds with Truss on several policies, although he hasn't publicly contradicted her. You know, what we're getting here is a sense that Truss has appointed a cabinet of strong wills, but no collective responsibility. They all think they're right and are acting on the assumption that they don't need to consider that cabinet should speak with one voice. Now, although I praise Truss as being, economy aside, more realistic than Johnson, has to be said Johnson did have a more disciplined cabinet. And several of the cabinet ministers at odds with Truss now were in Johnson's cabinet, so they can behave themselves when they need to. Braverman didn't make up policies that contradicted Johnson in his cabinet, so why is she doing it with Truss? Because she thinks Truss is finished already. She's in that place where, just as last December, she thinks it's now inevitable, it's just a matter of time before a majority of Tory MPs come to the same conclusion. She's unashamedly pitching to Tory members the people who will probably decide the next leader, although it does have to be wondered if Braverman is getting her tactics right. The view of the members means nothing if she doesn't get herself onto the final two for that ballot that goes to the members. And she did very badly last time. She came last. And exposing herself as a loose cannon is unlikely to persuade MPs whose main criticism of Liz Truss is that she's a loose cannon. 
But Braverman represents a very serious threat to Truss's authority. She's willfully contradicting the Prime Minister, and yet she remains in post as the joint third most senior member of the government. There were reports in the 1922 committee meeting last night, which I talked about earlier, that several times MPs were heard to be talking amongst themselves whilst Liz Truss was speaking. So it's clear that Truss has no authority amongst her wider parliamentary party, but also the cabinet that she appointed either. Even though I say that in theory she could change her policies and she could win back some trust amongst the market, certainly she could do that fairly easily. She could even win back some of the public again if she, she takes a more strategic view now. It's doubtful that she'll recover her authority within the party. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.